Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everyone. Jason here, and we are starting a new playthrough. I'm going to be playing through on normal just to have a little bit of fun. So this series is just going to be exploring a normal save, showing you guys some tips that I know and how to have the best start in the game. If you're a brand new player, a beginning player, if you're coming back after, you know, a year or two and you said, hey, look, these updates look really interesting. Is the game good yet? Number one, I'll tell you, yes, it is. It's very, very good. But number two, there's a few things that have changed over the past couple of years. And so let me show you some of the new things that you you guys can run into to hopefully make your uh, playthrough a little bit easier. So you always start out on the same, you know, not the same planet, but you always start out on a hazard planet. It'll be a cold planet, a hot planet. It'll be a radiation planet. It'll be a toxic planet. You'll always start out on one of those. Now, very rarely, and I haven't done it yet. I've been playing for years. Very rarely, you will start out on a good, like a normal planet that doesn't have anything on it. That's very rare. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I mean, you don't, don't count on it is what I'm trying to say. There is a cave right next to us, which is a really good sign. Because you're going to we want to find a cave or a lot of uh, beginning materials in the beginning. So it's, uh, your exosuit is updating and started up all your systems. And there you go. And oh, I actually have the generic anomaly. I like that. Now, you, your character might look a little different. Sometimes they're white. Sometimes they're blue. Sometimes they're red. Sometimes you'll have a different helmet. So it all depends. It's all randomized now. I have the default anomaly. So, uh, oh, anomaly character, anomaly traveler. Let's pick up these real fast. You don't really want to pick up those uh, those uh, vortex cubes, but hey, 17,000 in the beginning of the game is pretty good. Now we have a, uh, a cave here, but if you want to actually find a cave really easy, all you have to do is press down on your D-pad, go over to this little camera, the photo mode, and if you do that, if you're in a single player game, it will freeze the game completely, so nothing's happening right now. All right, and so if you're in single player, nothing's happening. If you're in multiplayer, it won't freeze the game because other people are running around freely. But single player, you could use this to move out a little bit. Now there is a limitation. You can't go too far away from your body, but you can kind of get a, a lay of the land. So you can look around and go, okay, is there a cave around here somewhere? And you're looking for holes in the ground like that, but they generally lead to a cave. Sometimes they don't. Or if you want to, if, you, on, if you're on uh, Xbox, your right thumbstick or PlayStation, your right thumbstick, click it in and you'll move the sun. Let me show you. So you can move the sun around. That way you can get a good photo, right? Well, there is an advantage to that if you're uh, playing the game in the beginning anyway. So if you click in that right thumbstick, it'll move the sun around like that. If you put it towards the ground, it'll actually put the sun behind the planet. And then you can look around and you're looking for, look at that right there. A yellow plant is sodium, you use that for your hazard protection. And a red plant is oxygen, you use that for your life support, so you don't like run out of air. So if you're running around, and I th think I saw one over here, there's another yellow plant right there. Oh, and there's a little red light over here. There you go. Oh, and look at there's a, uh, oh, we ran into the edge. This is the limitation of where I can go, and boom. Yeah, you see, it tells you, hey, look, you can't go farther than that, you're too far away from your body. But look at there's a uh, there's also a a building over there. You can see it off in the distance. We're gonna go towards that building. Heck yes! All right, but first we're gonna go into this cave. Now remember, look at photo mode changes the sun, but it's not permanent. It goes right back to normal. So don't worry about changing the sun. Everything resets when you go back in there. So let's pick up that. And then we're the reason you want to go into caves is because these minerals right here. They give you cobalt, and cobalt is very useful. You can sell it for money, or you can use it to make uh, batteries. That's what we're gonna do, because we just started out. But first, we need to fix our uh, our equipment. Our uh, multi-tool is broken, our scanner is broken, we need ferrite dust, which comes out of rocks. We can also make a analysis visor, which is like a uh, binoculars you use to scan items. But we're gonna need to, the carbon nanotubes, and we need carbon to make carbon nanotubes. There you go. So, let's get on over here. Um, let's look for any kind of rock. Small rocks will give you ferrite dust. And plants will give you carbon. You see that? So let's get some carbon out of here. That way we, we can make a visor. Alright. Oh, but it takes a little while. That's okay. 
And with your multi-tool, you see that meter over in the top right-hand corner? You see how it keeps going up higher and higher? That's your temperature on your multi-tool. So if your temperature gets too hot, your multi-tool will overheat. The problem, or the issue is, you want it to be hot, because the hotter it runs, the faster you can mine things. You, the faster you do, or the more damage you do to items. And so you look at how fast I'm doing these ones now. Now that my multi-tool was hot. So you want it to be hot, but you don't want to overheat it. So I would always just run it and just like let off the uh, trigger just a little bit for a little while. That way you could let it cool off just a little bit, a smidge, and then it'll let it go back again. Boom, like that. Get a lot of carbon. Here we go. Yep, we got all this stuff. We're just collecting some materials right now before we go into the cave because we're going to be collecting as much uh, carbon or cobalt, cobalt as we can. Now watch out for these plants. You see these little, um, right here in front of me, there's that pulsating uh, plant, and I can get really close to it before it goes off. But you see that? You see that plant right there? They won't get, it will not uh, start emitting gas. It won't try to poison you until you look at it. So, if there's another plant around here, it won't really do anything until you look at it. Because like, if I'm walking backwards or if it's above me, I won't see it and it won't be fair if I don't see it. If it, you know, kills me, I won't know what happened. So we should have enough to make all of our equipment. Let's see. Oh yeah, we have more than enough. We have 126 ferrite dust and 269 uh, carbon 69. Uh -huh. All right, so, in our, uh, in our general inventory, this is our general inventory, and if you use your D-pad right and left, you go to your technology. This is your technology inventory. You can put technology upgrades in here, and your cargo is like your backpack. This is where you can store all of your stuff. You see how big this is? You can fill up this whole square with inventory space, but you need to upgrade your backpack, your cargo inventory to do that. Same thing for your general. Your general is almost like your backpack, except for it's not as big. It doesn't carry as much stuff. But what we can do is if you press A or X if you're on PlayStation 4, if you press A, you can craft a product. So this is your building menu, and you can craft things in here. And you have, you know, the starting out recipes. You'll learn different recipes as you go. But these are your basic recipes that you start out with. And we need to make a carbon nanotube in order to make our visor. All right, now let's go over to our multi-tool. And we need our 75 ferrite dust to fix our scanner. So let's do that real fast, and we're going to fix it. Boom. And then we're gonna build, oh wait, it says that now we can scan for uh, sodiums. Now that our scanner is fixed, we can scan stuff. But we need to actually go back in there because we're gonna make a visor as well. So if you press X, it's gonna install any blueprint you picked up. Any technology blueprint you've picked up, you can build by going into X or square if you're on PlayStation. And here's your analysis visor. And it, it tells you right there, you required parts, we need one carbon nanotube to do it. So let's do that real fast. And we know we already made one, but it's okay if you don't have it already. It'll still put it in there. You just won't be able to fully make it. So let me show you how that works. So we have our carbon nanotube. Let's do that real fast. There we go. So now we've built our analysis visor, but if we wanted to make like our, our uh, bolt caster, we need chromatic metal and we need carbon nanotubes. We need three of them. We don't have any of that stuff, but you can still make it. So let's build it. And it just says, hey, look, you don't have any of the stuff. You need to go get it. You need to go find it. You need to go buy it, build it, whatever you need to do. But it'll still be there waiting for you. So all you have to do is find those parts and you'll be able to build that easy peasy. So we are, we are rocking and rolling here. Let's get our, you know, and once we have our analysis visor, now we have our binoculars. So if you hit left trigger on the, on your controller, you can scan everything. And every time you scan something, it'll give you a little bit of money. It'll also explain to you what it is. So that is a mineral, and we're gonna get a whole bunch of ferrite dust out of that. Here we go with these over here, unidentified minerals right here. If we scan them, it'll give it a name, and it'll go into our discovery tab. And so we've discovered that, because no one else has been here, we've discovered that. So now we can actually start uh we, we could do it before but i don't like to do it unless you scan it because then you get money for it you know you want to get as much money as you can early game and so we're going to break down these we want as much cobalt as we can get because cobalt is worth a lot now let me show you what i mean by that so uh, in my cobalt down here it says total value 
21,978 units. So I can get, if I sold this entire stack right now, I'd get $21,000. But right underneath that, in the, the really small print, it says 198 units each. So each cobalt will give me $198. If you go over to the ferrite dust, look at that. I get $14 per, whereas a cobalt, I get 200. That's why you want to go for the cobalt. Cobalt is definitely the way to go. You can use it to make a whole bunch of stuff, and there's a way more advanced things later on, but at first you can use it to make batteries, and batteries will save your life because you, they'll uh, actually recharge your hazard protection. So your hazard protection is a uh, protective layer Oh, look, I overheated my uh, my multi-tool. That's all right. We can go. But yeah, hazard protection. Oh, and we ran out of fuel, too. So if you press down on your D-pad, you come up with your quick menu right here, the same way we found our, uh, our photo mode. If you go to this little battery icon and you press up on your D-pad, it'll give you everything you can recharge. And mining beam right here, we just ran out of gas or fuel, so we do that. And these are the things you can use to refuel your mining beam. Now, we only have carbon, but if we had condensed carbon or phosphorus we could use those as well and just remember that the more uh precious the material is so the condensed carbon it takes less condensed carbon to refuel your mining beam versus your regular carbon because it's more precious uh material but we only have carbon so let's do that but yeah we could actually later on once we've uh, got a lot of uh, cobalt together we can make a ton of money but yeah, your hazard protection is the, uh, right here, your hazard protection module will protect you against any environmental damage. So if you're on a, a cold planet, it'll use your hazard protection. If you're on a hot planet, it'll use your hazard protection. Poison, radiation, whatever it is, it'll use your hazard protection in order to protect you. But it'll run out slowly. It'll start to drain, and you can use a battery to recharge it. That's why you want to pick up a lot of uh, uranium. Oh, look, a uranium on that. I love it. I'll take the uranium. You can use that for fuel later on. So, yeah, anything like that you can. So I would just pick up as much materials as you can. And because we're in a cave, we are protected from the environment, you guys. So you don't have to worry about the radiation killing us because we're in a cave. We're protected. As soon as we walk out the cave, though, it will start attacking us. Whoa, poison. We can take this guy out. That way he doesn't poison us. Come on. There it is. Boom. And it gave us some oxygen. Okay. But yeah, let's get some cobalt to start out with. We're going to have a lot of cobalt. And you can always buy it later on, but you're going to need money. So might as well get it so we can at least sell it minimum. And we have, oh, 282. Now, once you've breaking down a lot of uh, rocks and crystals and stuff like that, you might randomly get a geode. And these have random uh, ingredients in it. So if you're breaking down a lot of ferrite dust, a lot of rocks... You might get a lot of ferrite dust out of it. You might get magnetized ferrite, which is a rarer version of ferrite dust. Let's break it down. We press X on it to analyze if you're on Xbox or square if you're on PlayStation 4 or 5. And look, we got cobalt out of that. So we got, we're getting from cobalt. There we go. We got it from our cobalt rocks. All right, so we should be okay. Now, we have carbon and we have cobalt. I think those are the two ingredients we need to make a battery. So let's go into our build menu. That's our, our crafting products. A, if you're on Xbox, or X, if you're on PlayStation. And you see we have an ion battery right here. We need 10 cobalt. Oh, we need ferrite dust. So we need 5 ferrite dust and 10 cobalt. We have plenty of that. And if you hit your uh, left and right bumpers or your uh, R1 and L1, if you're on PlayStation, you see how the bottom it says build? Build one, two, three, four, five. You can build multiple, a stack of multiples as high as you want, but it'll tell you the ingredients. Hey, you, you need 100 cobalt and 50 ferrite dust in order to make 10 batteries. Totally worth it. All right, so now we're ready to go. So another part of the tutorial is, hey, look, you need to use your scanner. We fixed our scanner earlier, remember? So let's use our scanner real fast. And if you click in your left thumbstick, it'll scan out for you. So you can look around and it'll look at it and say, hey, look, there is a uh, deuterium rich plant. That's for your jetpack over there. It'll say, look, if there's NA, there's sodium rich plant. We're looking for sodium. Those are the yellow plants. That's what we're looking for because you can also use sodium to recharge your hazard protection as well. Now, batteries are way more efficient, but sodium is everywhere. And so it's easier to use sodium because it's all over the place, but a battery is a better use for it because you can use sodium to build other stuff. 
But right now, they want us to get some sodium. So let's do that real fast. We got some sodium over here. Now, look at that. It disappeared. After a little while, all the things that, gets, that get marked are going to disappear. So let's actually look over here. Boom. Let's get some sodium. We need to get a lot of sodium. All right. Now we need to recharge our hazard or protection. There you go on the bottom of the... So the bottom right or the right side of the screen so down on your d-pad go over to your recharge equipment icon and you can recharge a whole bunch of stuff i have a lot of life support i can recharge you use oxygen for that or a life support gel and then we have our hazard protection and again you can use sodium or you can use an ion battery ion battery is more efficient but for the tutorial they want you to use the sodium so let's use sodium there you go and look at there's our icon for our broken ship. Let's make it on over to our broken ship. Now on the way you can actually, you know, mine some stuff. Oh, let's scan this thing. Let's make some money so we can scan this plant. And you will get more money for plants versus rocks. Like look at that. We have 500 bucks for this plant. And you can upgrade that later on. This is a rock over here. We'll only get 200 for this rock. Watch. Boom. And so you want to focus on the plants because the plants are a more, uh, there's more variety of plants and you'll get a lot of money that way. So let's scan all this. This is going to be a mineral, so 200. And it's just easy way to make money early on, especially when you don't have anything really going on. Uh, you don't, you can't make anything. You can't sell anything right now. We don't have anything to sell other than our little bit of cobalt and our, uh, our, uh, what are those things called? Vortex cubes. But we really don't have anything to sell as of right now. Let's scan these things. Yeah, all right. So let's reach our signal. This is for our starship. Oh, wait, but this is a plant. Yeah, we haven't scanned this one yet. Yeah. And so I would recommend just try to scan as much as you can. And then if you look, you see those red dots? Those are animals. We can scan those animals and they tell us where they are at. And once you've scanned an animal, you can actually see a green paw once you've scanned it, but we haven't scanned any of, the, any of those animals yet. So they're red dots. Let's see over here. Can we see them? Hope we can, they're flying crabs. So let's scan this one real fast and you'll see it turns from a red dot to a green paw. There you go. And every other crab, because we've scanned that species already. We got 3000 bucks for that, heck yeah. But we scanned that species already. So now all the other crabs that are floating around they will turn into green paws as well. So there is a different one over there. There is another red paw or a red dot. We're not wor worried about that yet. Let's get over to our ship. Oh, and here we have our jet pack. And if you want to know how to do that jet pack thrust, like you can run by clicking in your right thumbstick and you run and you see the little meter at the bottom right hand side of the screen will start to lower. That means you're gonna run out of breath once that's over and you get tired, so you have to take a rest. Boom, okay, now my guy's really tired. He needs to take a break, so he'll just walk it off. But if you wanna go really fast, what you can do is if you hit a right bumper or a R1 on your controller, it punches. You do a little punch. That way you can, you know, if you wanna attack somebody or, you know, a sentinel or whatever. But if you're running and then you punch and hit your jetpack at the same time, you do a shoulder boost, which makes you go really, really fast, really, really far. So let's do that again. Punch jetpack. There you go. And it just depends on how upgraded your backpack is, your jetpack and everything. Oh, look, there's an animal right there. A tentacle monster. Whoa. So we scanned the tentacle monster. Look at this thing. Whoa. Oh, and we got poisoned. Holy cow. Got a lot of poison around here. And we got these guys. They, and normally animals won't attack you. If they are going to attack you, it'll turn into a red animal symbol and they will they will be predators. They're going to basically come after you. It, you know, in general, they don't, especially on the er, on the starting uh, planet. They won't do that because you're learning the basics up. Oh, we made it to our spaceship. Woo. Let's hit this thing right here. Our distress beacon. Scenario iteration two, three, one, one, eight, seven, six, six, one T deleted. Boundary separation failure likely. Vessel 16 emptied. Cause sentinel intervention. Deliberate transfer. Analysis. Fresh iteration generated. Anomaly containment prepared. Don't know what any of that means. Let's broadcast where we're at. You know, because it's a distress beacon. We're going to get some help, right? 
Broadcast received. Traveler anomaly detected. Anomaly is compliant. Position logged. System integrity scan initialized. Don't know what any of that means. All right. So, we just basically used our distress beacon. We don't know what the heck's going on. Maybe someone will come get, give us some help. And if you see these cool little boxes hanging out, like these yellow, and sometimes you'll see little red boxes, you can actually open these and get little random items from inside. Like we got sodium from there. Heck yeah, now these red tubes, you're gonna need an Atlas Pass, which is a farther in game item. It's like a, basically an access card in order to get into these red tubes. And some doors, you're gonna need an Atlas Pass Atlas Pass 3. Oh, look at you. There's a red boxes right here. So let's open these up. Get some, you know, random items out of there. Got it. I like it. And these damage containers will have special items in them, but they're locked. Thankfully, the locks are all broken, so you can take this rust and metal. What I usually do is I'll get rid of it. So if you hold down the right thumbstick, you click it in and hold it down, it'll delete the item. There you go. We don't really need the rusted metal. You can use it later on, but you know, it's not really worth it early. So uh, I just get rid of it and I'll take whatever's on the inside of that box. And also look at damage machinery. Let's see what we could do with this damage machinery. Same thing here. There's living slime here. It's really not worth it to keep this in the uh, grand scheme of things. You can make nanites from it, but it takes so long and it just, it's not worth the effort, not worth the time. You'll get more uh, nanites out of the broken module versus that little uh, slime right there. So we got 20, 30 nanites out of there. That's a pretty good haul, all right. So we've done all that. Let's get into our spaceship. And obviously this thing is not working well. Look at that thing, it's all sparking. This is broken. Iteration, big number again, online. Atlas connection, iterment. Launch thrusters. Offline. Pulse engine. Offline. I find myself alone on a strange world, unequipped and in danger. I have no memory of how I got here, no sense of a before. But this ship at least seems to recognize me. The controls react to my touch, or at least that of my exosuit. I am not dead yet, and this ship is a lifeline out to the stars. So let's connect our, our uh, exosuit, our suit into it, and let's see what's going on. Log 4925A, unavailable. Substituting data. Exosuit. Connected. Suggestion, pilot should perform maintenance. The select desired repair path. Let's repair the ship. Self-guided repair protocols initiated. Pulse engine critically damaged. I need a hermetic seal and metal plating. You see how it does all that right there? My pulse engine, my engine is broken. I need those items to fix it. All right. So we're gonna need to get those things in our uh, launch thruster as well. If you go into your menu, you can see our launch thruster because it's blinking red. It's broken too. We need pure ferrite and dihydrogen jelly in order to fix it as well. So we need to get a whole bunch of different parts. Let's get out. Now that we know it's broken, we can get out of here. And there you go, your uh, main uh, tutorial comes up on the right hand side. I need to repair my pulse engine with metal plating. In order to make metal plating, you need ferrite dust and you need a lot of it. So let's hit some of these rocks. That's not a rock, that's a plant. This is rocks over here. All right, so let's get some of these rocks broken down so we can get some uh, ferrite dust out of them. Oh, there's some uranium in there as well. Oh, we can't get this now. There's some items you cannot break down because you need an advanced mining beam. I just have a regular mining beam right now. I need to get an upgrade to my advanced mining laser. So we can't break that thing down yet, those crystals yet. Let's grab this. I should be scanning these things, but I'm too lazy to. So I'm just trying to get my uh, ferrite dust in order to make metal plating. And you're gonna need, you're gonna notice a lot of that is you're gonna need a lot of these basic materials. That's why it's way easier just to farm them in the beginning. And then later on, when you have enough money, you can just buy them from markets if you want. But yeah, you're going to need a lot of these basic building blocks, these materials early on. So the more you farm, the better you'll be off. You know, you'll be able to just get a whole bunch of stuff done without even thinking about it because you'll already have it in your backpack ready to go. 
Now, as we can see, we're looking around, look at it, give a whole bunch of stuff over here. So if you if you highlight some of these, uranium deposit, you need a special tool in order to dig out this uranium, but there's a deposit over there, so we can go over there and get some uranium if we wanted to. Same thing for over here. Not all of them are uranium. Some of them are copper. Some of them are going to be you know, magnetized ferrite. Some of them are, you know, uranium. Silver. They're just different resources will hit on these, uh, these cool little, uh, I don't know, stop sign looking. You know, it only has four sides. Triangle or a sideways square. <laughs> Obviously, I am a shape scientist. All right. But yeah, you have different icons. You have this one right here, buried technology module. Again, we need a special tool to dig down. Because it's buried underground, we're going to need a special tool to dig it out. But, you know, you can see, you can scan around for stuff and look and see what, what's around you. Oh, there's a knowledge stone over there. So if we wanted to learn language, there's a knowledge stone right there. But we have enough ferrite dust to make a uh, metal plating, so let's do that real fast. Now, you can make it in your starship uh, inventory if you're close enough. If you're too far away, like if you get more than 100 feet away, you won't be able to do that. So let me show you this now. Yeah, see, starship is out of range now. I mean, I'm literally like 100 feet away. So if you get too far away, you can't do anything with your starship. Just keep that in mind. Now, you can get an upgrade later on that lets you uh, extend that, that radius. So actually, you can do stuff farther away, but still it's limited. So just be careful. We're going to craft it. And we have metal plating right there. 50 ferrite dust. Done. And so now we need to get it. Let's get into our uh, ship. Number one, when you're inside, it protects your hazard protection. So, of course, you want to get inside as much as possible. But number two, we can do that real fast. Let's get our metal plating and we'll just drop it on our pulse engine. Here we go. Done. So we have one thing done, but now we need a hermetic seal. Iteration long number. Functional. Starship critically damaged. Vital ingredients missing. Unable to synthesize required components. Pulse engine requires a hermetic seal. Well, we need assistance because we don't know how to make that yet. We haven't learned that blueprint, so we don't know how to make it. And our ship doesn't know how to make it, so we don't know what's going on. The heck? Recommendation. Iteration comparison reveals hermetic seal nearby. Salvage planetary chart from a distressed beacon cache. All right. So there is a, a hermetic seal nearby, but we need to get the map out of our distress beacon. So let's get out of here. And there is a special map in here, so let's get in here and let's find that map. I peer inside the beacon's housing. As well as a distress beak broadcast unit, it contains a planetary chart. Let's take that thing. Alright, so now a planetary chart is basically a map that'll show you where a nearby item is. So let's go into our menu. And if you hover over the planetary chart, number one, it's throbbing. But number two, if you press X on it, or square if you're on PlayStation, it will uh, fire it off and use it to show you where the location is. Let's do that. And so now we know, oh, look at there's a trading outpost over there next to us. But yeah, we're up in the air. It shows us where we, we need to go generally, right over there. But there's a trading outpost right over here. Okay, so heck yeah, we know where we need to go to get our hermetic seal. So I'm gonna call it there. Hopefully you guys liked this video. If you did, Hit that like button for me, and if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel where I'm uploading videos all the time, and I will see you guys next time.